press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. Hello and welcome. Today we have with us Professor and Spokesperson of the Rashtriya Janata Dal Party, Mr. Manoj Kumar Jha. Welcome to News Laundry, Thank sir. You. Thank you so much. I would like to start by asking you, how would you describe the role of a spokesperson? I'll tell you, uh, spokespersons, I believe, uh, in the present sense of the term, it's a post-90 phenomena. Hmm. Before that, I, I think leaders used to communicate directly. Probably they did not need any spokesperson. But post-90s, and I believe together with the rise of new liberal politics and then boom in the media, you needed... Uh, apart from the leaders, you needed somebody to represent the view of a political party. Mm. So I believe it's a, it's a basically a post-90 phenomena. They're spokespersons and they have become much more important today. Mm. And I mean, they were never, earlier not heard of. Mm. And uh, considering how TV debates have become such a drama today, right? It's an entertainment that plays out. How do you as a spokesperson of RGD find your, find your space in that drama that plays out? I'll tell you, uh, if I look at the role of a spokesperson in the present uh, television medium in particular, before, I mean, last, if you just leave four years, last four years or five years to be precise, hmm. it was never so full of noise. Hmm. You had a sense of things that, yes, you can go speak, hmm. uh, convey your point, hmm. or if somebody disagrees with you, hmm. that also is a point well taken. But suddenly, in the last four or five years, frankly speaking, uh, the debate in the name of open debate, mm. what we see that the very idea of debate is conspicuously missing. You are, you are not there to speak your mind. Somebody is going to bash you. Somebody is going to make sure that you are decimated. Yeah. Somebody will make sure that your voice is not heard. And I believe it is not doing any good to the very idea of public debate. Do you think it's the noise that came in with the BJP, especially since you said in the last four years? I won't say it came, uh, it was brought by BJP, hmm. but somewhere there is a kind of correlation. Hmm. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm very sure about it. Hmm. Because if you look at the, even the language used, hmm. today suddenly the entire language in the public discourse, it's so very nauseating. Hmm. Could we ever imagine that entire opposition or Congress in particular would be called termite? And that comes from my Prime Minister. Hmm. I might not have voted for him, but the fact is he's my Prime Minister. And if Mr. Prime Minister hmm. uses termite and he makes Samshan and Kabristan kind of reference, hmm. it tells you that what is getting fundamentally wrong hmm. in public discourse and, and, and then there is competition right. because it's a chain reaction. Right. And uh, very but do you also think media houses have gotten extremely, there are political leanings within media houses that political parties are tying themselves up with media houses to promote them? You, I, I'll tell you, uh, it's commodification of news. Hmm. And suddenly people have realized hmm. anger sells. So suddenly every evening you find seven, eight anchors very angry. Hmm. Actually, they are not genuinely angry. They believe that anger sells. Hmm. Now, this anger had attraction, I won't deny, post Anna, post 2G, 3G, whatever. Hmm. Suddenly, this anger was all over. Hmm. Now, it has become almost a pattern. And how do you find your place in that? Since, since you've, I mean, as far as I've seen when you speak, there's a certain poetic essence to how you speak. You make a lot of references, you're slow, you're funny, but that doesn't have space in a panel discussion like when you're, say, on Republic or Times Now or certain other channels, right? So how do you, how do you navigate through that? I'll tell you very frankly, uh, in fact, last uh, six months, to be precise, hmm. I only give bites to new channels right. or including, uh, say, uh, outfits like ANI. Hmm. I have started avoiding hmm. debates. Hmm. I know because, you know, I'm a spokesperson for RGD. Right. But at the same time, when I look at my role, I look at my role in the larger oppositional space, hmm. which is opposed to right-wing authoritarian politics. Hmm. So at one point, I'm from RGD, but at the same time, I, I believe what that space requires, that oppositional right. space. I, you are very right. Many times it is very difficult. Hmm. But what I 
try to make sure hmm. that in the process to get heard, hmm. I should not give in to their, give in to their directive right. or take the public discourse to their level. I believe decency, there is a line. Hmm. One never should never cross. Hmm. Do you think as a spokesperson, you have to often defend a position that you personally might not agree with? Look, uh, it is not only about me as a spokesperson. Hmm. I am a university professor. Right. There are certain items in my syllabus hmm. which, with which I may not align as strongly as I do with other things. Hmm. But then, as a university professor for that particular course, hmm. I need to speak about everything. Hmm. In my case, as I said earlier, hmm. uh, to tell you in the language of a computer, hmm. we have a strong anti-right-wing template. Right. A leaning through socialism, which is a bad word these days. Hmm. Uh, I believe that state should not withdraw from health, education. Hmm. So public uh, health system or public education system. Now, when we speak these things, hmm. we are considered outdated. Right. But I believe hmm. being in RJD, hmm. it has, um, and, and I must give due respect hmm. uh, to credit to my party. Hmm. On very many issues, I have decided a particular position. And my party, hmm. more often than not, has agreed. That's very interesting because a couple of spokespersons I spoke to actually told me that either they just refuse to go on air or they decide that they're doing this as a job where you have to keep aside your personal opinions and personal biases to a certain extent. Do you ever face that? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, no. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, politics for me hmm. is a passion. Hmm. It's people's politics. Hmm. There could be differences occasionally. Right. But the fact is, overall, if you look at the political leaning or inclination of RJD, hmm. it is rooted in the JP tradition. Right. You might find certain anomalies, hmm. but this is part of any political trajectory. Hmm. But the fact is, for me, it is never like a job. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's much more emotional quotient involved in it. Hmm. And when I speak about patriotism, for instance, I am I'm worried the way nationalism debate is going on. Hmm. And I remember Howard Zinn who said the greatest patriot is one who defends his nation against a bad government. Hmm. How come government and nation, they become synonymous? Hmm. So RJD allows me to speak these points hmm. and they have attraction. Is it also a certain amount of challenge to defend someone like Lalu Yadav? You know, I, I'll tell you very frankly, hmm. forgive me, Lalu ji is also a victim of a particular kind of perception management created by the big media houses. Okay. Like any individual. And what is this perception? Perception that? is, first of all, let's recall. Hmm. Laluji challenged the grammar of politics. I was born in Bihar. Right. I have seen those days. Hmm. I was young hmm. and I knew people who had never voted. Hmm. People who ne had never seen an election booth. Right. They came out. Hmm. It was a subaltern rising. Hmm. Now, subaltern rising all over the world is never accepted by the top. Hmm. Easily. Hmm. Laluji had his fair share of tribulations. Hmm. When they lost to him politically, hmm. they tried to trap him through other means, hmm. legal and many things which hmm. matters are in, um, in, in the court. Hmm. But very frankly, when I talk about his politics, there are many shades to him. Right. For instance, unlike any political leader, hmm. I have never ever Hmm. had an occasion when Laluji would tell me, Manoj, you did wrong. Hmm. Manoj, you should not have taken that position. Hmm. And it includes people won't believe, even supporting Bernie Sanders hmm. and taking those issues. Hmm. And Laluji had perfectly hmm. uh, no, no problems with it. Hmm. So that tells you somewhere that the Lalu, which the dominant media hmm. here knows, hmm. he is much more than what. That. So that, and that's the kind of Lalu that you want to talk about. Yeah, that's the kind of Lalu right. I wish to talk about hmm. because you might differ with him. Hmm. But the fact is, he changed the grammar of electoral politics. Right. Subalterns, uh, whatever they have in all political parties. Let me tell you, if BJP in Bihar looks different today, hmm. JDU in Bihar looks different today, Congress in Bihar looks different today. It's because they have to hmm. give due credit to. Lalu Prasad Yadav hmm. and his wife. Has it gotten more difficult now? I mean, now that like uh, the RGD also follows JP's ideologies and socialism and all of that, but the Fodor scam is, it, it turns 
completely the other way, right? Of everything that the party stands for. And I know that you have said that this is big, this is the upper caste party trying to uh, put them on a spot because you don't want to deal with them in an election, right? That's the stance you've taken. But do you often have to go on a damage control mode when you know that, okay, we are in a spot now? Look, uh, this case, hmm. I'm not a law student, hmm. but I have read this entire case. Hmm. You might disagree with him politically, hmm. but I tell you, it's a standard case of hmm. trapping somebody hmm. who was actually the first one. I'll just give you one instance. Hmm. The gentleman who is presented by CBI as the whistleblower hmm. and the entire narrative is built around him, hmm. is built around him. Hmm. He received facts hmm. from Patna. Right. He has acknowledged it. Hmm. Who sent the facts? Chief Secretary, hmm. Finance Commissioner, hmm. in consultation with hmm. Laluji, who was the Chief Minister then. Hmm. But then we know hmm. that these are the kind of things where, where I have said it on record hmm. that investigation or rule of law depends hmm. on what kind of position you provide to prosecution witness hmm. and what kind of marginalized position you provide to defense witness. That tells the entire game hmm. story. And we have been a victim there, I must convey. Hmm. Uh, but, but at the same time, we know hmm. that the more difficult is the task hmm. about RJD, it is said hmm. that. Under pressure, hmm. we work much better. Really? Yeah. But you, you've you also said that now that the upper caste is putting you in a spot, the upper caste politics of BJP and all of that, does that also happen with spokespersons that, you know, media channels have also pushed you to the corner, not given you screen space or bullied you on screen? Does that play out in media as well, the same that the politicians are doing? I'll, I'll tell you, it happens, but... Uh, um, generally, I, so far it has not become a trend. Mm. But uh, without naming the channel, I'll tell you today, mm. there was some incident in UP. Mm. And I made a very strong observation about it. Mm. I went to the extent of saying mm. that if colouring the building is the only job mm. of a chief minister, then the entire matter should be outsourced to Asian pants or Barjo. Mm. You don't need a chief minister to colour the building. Right. You need to make sure that oxygen cylinders are available. Hmm. You need to make sure that Diwali does not fight Ramjan right. or Kabristan does not fight Shamshan. Right. This bite was taken by a television channel, right. but it was not aired. Hmm. So I called them up. Hmm. Sir, we have not come on that story. Hmm. That's the standard response. Hmm. I said, no, I saw you came to that story, hmm. but you did not carry my bite. Hmm. That's their prerogative. But the fact is, I have seen my television medium, hmm. their political econ economy is dictating them so much hmm. that more often than not, it's a single party dominance. Hmm. Only their view. Hmm. The other day you must have seen an interview. Hmm. If that is an interview, I think we need to change the definition. Hmm. Where my Prime Minister spoke to one media outlet. Hmm. If this is an interview, hmm. then I think... Which we, media outlet was this? I think Z News. Okay. Uh, they carried uh, Prime Minister's interview. Okay. And uh, uh, there was nothing like interview. It was a monologue, prepared, well scripted, crafted, carried. Hmm. And uh, I think you tweeted about it yeah, as well. I, I yeah. did. Huh. I did. Huh. Because I believed that no matter whether I differ with him, yeah. he's my PM. Hmm. And I would want my PM to talk about health, education. Hmm. I would want them, him to talk about Rohit Bemula. Hmm. I would want him to talk about Bhima Koregaon. Hmm. I would not simply want him to talk about employment in such a manner that there is a pakore ki dukan hmm. in front of Z News. Hmm. That's not how I would expect my PM to say. Hmm. Another interesting fact that I noticed in your party was Pragati Mehta, another spokesperson, recently quit and joined JDU, right? Um, for me, this is what it looks like. When a spokesperson quits and joins, I was thinking, is it that as a spokesperson, he's not able to defend his party anymore? Or is it that he's more and that his moral high ground is so much that he went to a party that doesn't have corruption allegations or so at least explicitly? Or is it just a strategic move that they think that RJD is falling apart now? Because when a spokesperson quits, it's, 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 it says how indefensible the uh, party can first be. First of all, let me tell you. Hmm because you have given an instance of a particular individual. Hmm. That individual, hmm. Uh, when these alleged corruption charges were there, right. since then, he was with us. Right. Uh, he was a surprise Lok Sabha candidate from Munger. Hmm. Uh, I frankly tell you, I didn't know hmm. who he was. So I asked, I mean, he, was, he had just appeared and he, got, he was given a ticket. I mean, that is Laluji and his politics. Okay. He saw merit and he gave him the ticket from Munger. Hmm. You know, Politics has become 
very different now. Hmm. Beyond ideology, beyond commitment, it's all about opportunity. Hmm. And I believe this is not doing good. Hmm. Uh, even if there are greener pastures available, if political leaders or spokespersons hmm. or any uh, uh, activist, hmm. they decide to move from one, because I know there are many people, you are not even sure that whether they were a week earlier in one party, a right. week later in another party, hmm. that is not going good, doing good either to their persona or their political inclination. Hmm. And it is actually uh, what we say that it is taking a heavy toll but on politics. But does the persona of a spokesperson matter that much? Does what he believe matters as much? Because that's also what I gathered from the other spokespersons I spoke to that, you know, you do it as a job. Does it matter that? Because the people are watching it because it's a party line. I'll tell you, I will speak about myself. I don't know about Which others. is also why spokespersons keep rotating. Uh -huh. right? you don't but I'll to... tell you about uh -huh. myself. Uh -huh. uh, very frankly, hmm. I don't take my job also as mere job. Hmm. I'm teaching in university. Hmm. If there was no... I wish to interact with my students 24-7, hmm. hmm. even beyond classrooms. Hmm. It is not a job. Hmm. For me, it is not a routine. Hmm. For me, I have certain things to express. Right. I feel strongly about certain things. Hmm. I wish to convey that hmm. RJD is my political party. Hmm. And if it was mere job, hmm. I would have had difficulty. Hmm. There is an element of passion, involvement, what we say, a kind of attachment to certain issues, hmm. certain, certain values, which you wish to convey. Hmm. And that, that makes your, even if it is a job, right. uh, it doesn't appear like a job. Right, but that's for you. Not, yes, not, for, uh, not right. for me, frankly. And when you take class, right, with your students, if you're teaching them political theory or JP's theory or socialism, do you use RJD as the ultimate example to... Not at all. Why is that? I, I'll tell you very frankly. I know it's a very, very difficult question. Hmm. But right from the day when I joined RJD, hmm. my classroom appearance, hmm. I don't carry my politics. Uh, largely issues I'll take. Because my frame is Marxist, hmm. socialist. I'll speak about it. I'll speak about other issues also. Hmm. But RJD, for instance, I'm teaching in this university. Hmm. I have never had any meeting or anything of RJD here. Hmm. So this space, I believe, hmm. is a different space. Hmm. But never in class. You, never, you would, ever. But you wouldn't bring in your experience as a spokesperson. You know, this is what I saw. This is what I happens do, I, inside. I, I do, but in a different context. For instance, hmm. there is a fav uh, favorite uh, television anchor hmm. all over. He is all over media. Hmm. So I have had my share of interaction with him. Who is this? And my share of interaction with him. Hmm. Uh, you will see it, there is a photograph of Nehru. Huh. I'm very fond of Nehru. Huh. And a couple one, of photographs. Actually. A couple of huh. photographs. I'm, I'm an, uh, I love Nehru. I have read his books. I've written about him. Right. Uh, so one day there was a massive uh, difference of opinion between two of us. Hmm. Is he and someone who generally has a difference of opinion with a lot of people? Huh. Then I can guess. <laughs> well, same person. Okay. <laughs> So I told him that you must read this book, Parallel Lives by Rudrangshu Mukherjee. Huh. He said he is fond of Subhas Bose. Manika, there was no contradiction between Subhas and Nehru. Huh. Uh, very many people do not know yes. that Nehruji regularly sent hmm. uh, tea leaves right. for his wife. Hmm. I mean, suddenly we are living in a world hmm. where the Nehru is fighting Patel, Patel has differences with hmm. Gandhi. You Gandhi wrote about this also. So I have written about huh. it. So these kind of issues go to the classroom, but never specifically hmm. RJD. And that has been my strength. That has also helped hmm. my cause and my party's cause. Hmm. Is it a thankless job to be a spokesperson? Do you sometimes wonder why you're doing it even? One day I started writing. Hmm. It's not a thankless job, hmm. first of all. Hmm. Uh, very many people, they call you, they say, sir, this is what I wanted to say. Right. Sir, thank you so much. Hmm. The other day somebody told me, I made a statement which was blown out of proportion by four or five channels. Hmm. What was it? About uh, our army chief. Oh, right. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe, I had yeah. said that we had two maps in Bihar. Yeah, I saw the GD Bakshi retorting ah, to you. Ah. <laughs> then I said, look, we don't even remember the faces of previous army chiefs. Hmm. I wanted to tell people that, please, Pakistan had this experience. Hmm. Let's not emulate Pakistan. Let's not make that mirror image. Hmm. 
but it was blown out of proportion but i received i frankly i'm telling you hmm. 50 telephone calls hmm. from different people hmm. that's how you said it so that gives you a sense of but then one day i was planning to write a piece which is just 10 12 lines written hmm. the lonely life of a spokesperson how intense it is lonely ha huh. for instance i have to react on certain things ha huh. something has happened in bihar i'll tell you hmm. i have no information Hmm. But then suddenly I'm connected. Hmm. What to do then? Hmm. You Because you also have to look like an expert on this. No, no, don't look like. Huh. Without letting you know on which issue huh. they are going to ask you, you are connected. Hmm. So what you have to do? Suddenly you feel lonely. Hmm. That's a, that's a loneliness many a time. Hmm. But then I believe that loneliness gets compensated hmm. by the kind of say positive compliments. or you when your party or but your what do you do is? then what do you do because i i know a lot of spokesperson you can see it on the channel that you know they'll start picking another issue and screaming about it I, how I, do you navigate I'll, I'll do you, you google search immediately no no <laughs> I, i'll tell you very frankly hmm. if i do not know i look at on the macro aspect of it hmm. if there is law not or problem i'll take a position hmm. generally i make sure Hmm. that if i am critical of a law and order position in a particular state even if it is ruled by bjp hmm. i would try to have hmm. the same kind of opinion hmm. when it's a friendly state maybe say ruled by congress hmm. and that helps you i believe uh, that probably even television channels they they believe that i won't go overboard hmm. when it's a question of a hmm. and suddenly disappear when the question of b Try and to. how does it happen on a panel you, like if if everyone fights so much after the panel discussion some of the people i interviewed told me that you know after that everybody's friends there's there isn't that kind of anger that we have on the panel discussion we go for chai cuz that's a, that's a side that viewers don't get to see right i'll tell you very frankly for me with me hmm. fights have been very very rare hmm very rare but whenever it has happened hmm it is not business as usual for me it i get impacted hmm maybe i'm not cut out for this hmm but i get impacted hmm so if there is a very very ugly kind of scene hmm i would regret why was i here hmm there was long back once i said to somebody something which i later realized i should have used little less harsh word hmm i regret those things also hmm so but on the whole i won't say that i'll go for tea and i'll forget everything because i keep thinking that either i should not have been here hmm. or if i was here hmm. i i should have uh, done differently hmm but sometimes i as a student as, as when i was a student and i'm i've just very recently joined journalism also what happens for me is when i look at how politics plays out very often the left just starts mirroring the right in their argument the kind the, the very criticism of the right's hate becomes a hate speech from the left right so how how do you navigate that i'll tell you today only i i it, it is difficult for me hmm. because And like i know that you have said secularism has also gotten equated with muslims yeah right does does hate speech gotten equated with the right because does can left can also give a hate speech right I'll tell you very frankly. Hmm. I think suddenly hmm. and believe my words. Hmm. Actual physical violence hmm. and violence in language hmm. it has become the dominant mode of communication in my country. Right. In Kerala if a RSS cadre is killed, hmm. a CPM cadre is killed, hmm. it's a warning signal for everyone. Hmm. That if we don't mend our ways, hmm. we are probably going to become Taliban very soon. Hmm. Actually, Taliban started like this. Hmm. There was some traction for that kind of politics, hmm. and if it happens on a bigger scale, hmm. I tell you, it's going to be worrisome for everybody—left, right, center, all—because hmm. nobody is going to be permanently in power. Hmm. But if this is the mode of communication, hmm. this is something which worries me. Hmm. But the left also adapts to I, this mode. I, I'll of tell you, I'll, there is same amount of hmm. failing to accommodate alternative voices. Right. I would want a center left or a left hmm. which is actually which is which has a universal appeal hmm. which is inclusive hmm. and I I have seen very many 
uh, my friends in the left, mm. the moment they have to engage with identity politics, say, for instance, uh, Babsa in JNU, mm. or for instance, uh, any Ambedkarite groups, so they would set their own terms. Mm. It is not going to help. Mm. What we believe that very strongly, mm. that look beyond the political parties, there is this space, mm. right, left, center left center right but how important are these categories because then it, it just becomes binary politics right you have not, to make a choice it, it, it is it is not binary so it's difficult to accommodate not, right it, it, if it, you it, have to no, categorize no no when i say center left or center right hmm. i am i believe i am center left hmm. so what is center left my essential argument from center left is hmm. that i repeat hmm. education hmm. should not be privatized hmm. health should not be privatized. Hmm. I believe if we are able to take care of education, health, and public domain, the influence of public sector is important, hmm. including jobs. I think we won't have differences. Differences arise hmm. when you enter, enter social cultural arena. Right. For instance, Padmavati. Right. Hmm. I find many, many left-leaning parties are also silent. Hmm. Why? Hmm. And I have been saying this, that if Kabir was reborn, hmm. if, if, if we ha he had to come back to India, this nation is in no position to accommodate Kabir. Hmm. Hmm. So when we speak about these are positions, this is not a binary. That you think is essential yeah. to occupy. Yeah. Hmm. Also now I would like to ask you, who is the one spokesperson who you just despise having on a panel or just ha don't want to deal with? <laughs> I mean, that's why I told you this is against my nature huh. uh, to name somebody. Okay. Uh, but then, uh, you know, this television, I actually didn't have earlier in my room. Hmm. But uh, because of the debate, and generally, I would not hmm. be able to make out. I like how you're out. nicely like evading the... <laughs> no, no. I, I, okay. I would not like to take any name. Okay. Hmm. There are people I love to argue, hmm. many from BJP. Who? Who is one person from BJP that you like? I, I tell you, uh, many, many. Even I, if you just go by, go with um, back and check hmm. whether it is Samvit or Naren Kohli or for that matter Sudhansu ji, hmm. uh, generally we gel very well. Hmm. Even with Samvit? Yes. Hmm. Ah. Because I have decided my, for because myself. He's quite uh, an amount of noise. But, but I would advise you to see some of his. Hmm. Debates with me, okay. Uh, because I generally don't cross a boundary, okay. And because I don't cross a boundary, hmm. uh, they also respect it. I must put it on record. Hmm. But there are a couple of people, not more than one or two. Hmm. I would not like to debate with them. Hmm. And uh, any channels you don't like to go on because you know how they're going to treat you. <laughs> Look, uh, I, about channels, I'll tell you, they probably don't realize hmm. they have they are becoming echo chambers. Hmm. They don't know that historians or the contemporary history shall be very unkind to them. Hmm. They have done enough harm. Damage. Hmm. So much of zingoism, so much of uh, skirting the main issue. Hmm. Today there is a death on account of uh, no access to a PDS system. Hmm. But in the evening you are debating hmm. uh, Padmavati. Hmm. So maybe contemporaries don't make any any uh, any comment, but hmm. historians will never forgive you. Hmm. So so there isn't a channel that you would still name. Uh, I tell you, hmm. <laughs> of course I would. Or are you afraid they might not call you? No if no. You no. Name them. I I, I hmm. told you very frankly. Hmm. I have started avoiding debating, hmm. not because of I don't like, hmm. because I believe the in, the things which I want right. in the debate, hmm. the things I believe that there nation no must space be, for it. no nation must be talking about huh. it. They are never the talking points. Right. Even on a day hmm. when there is a crisis, somebody's uh, big news has hmm. come that ki amdani mein 16,000 guna ki burdi ho gayi hai. Us din aap teen topi walon ko aur tilak walon ko bula karke bata rahe ho ki ye hona chahiye ya mangal So we know that you've very nicely named the channel <laughs> in your few <laughs> sentences. So thank you so much Manoj Chha sir for this lovely interview. Um, if you like this interview and want to see more of such work, subscribe to News Laundry. When viewers pay, viewers are served. When advertisers pay, advertisers are served. So subscribe for independent media.